Welcome, everybody. We are live to another episode of Elevate Your Grind brought to you by the Cannabis Lab. I am your host, Todd Rosales. Should say that right here, although I asked Evan to move it up here. We'll see if that happens. Uh, thank you guys for joining us for a Monday evening happy hour edition of Elevate Your Grind. As always, we've got a phenomenal guest for you. But first, let's give you a few updates, right? Uh, last week, our cannabis investment panel was absolutely amazing. Uh, we streamed it live on Facebook for those of you that are not members of Cannabis Lab yet. Uh, definitely check that out. Go over to our Facebook page at Canna Business Group. Uh, it was a phenomenal, uh, phenomenal panel. I definitely think you should check it out. This week, Thursday, which is the 11th. Or no, that was last week. Thursday, which is the 18th, we have our branding and marketing panel. Um, we've got some industry titans on that panel. Definitely look forward to it. That's going to be moderated by our very own Evan Bopp from Potent Brands. If you guys don't know Evan, when you rewatch this show, everything you see on screen is Evan. Everyone who takes out everything dumb I say, that's Evan too. Evan literally does everything for this show that is not on camera. He does all the hard work. I get all the glory. So please, let's support him Thursday night, 6 o'clock. Uh, if you're not a member yet, you can register at joincelab.com. Please feel free to register as my guest, Todd Rosales. Uh, we'll let you in for free. It's definitely going to be an amazing meeting. You should check it out. Next week on the podcast, we've got some more great show. Actually, let's start with Wednesday. Wednesday the 17th, we've got David Daly from Grav Labs. If you guys don't know who Grav is, I've got one of their things right here on the desk. This is their dugout, one of the greatest tools I've ever used. Check him out. They've been around well before since legalization, and we're going to talk to him about what it's like to operate a company before and after that happens. Next week, we've got Vladimir Batista from Happy Monkey. You can check him out on Tuesday, and we'll make a few more announcements as we continue to schedule the show. Um, Finally, we've got two events coming up. It's going to be Sunday, July 5th is going to be the beach cleanup in conjunction with Florida for Care. Look out for more information on that. And then soon enough, we'll have our details on our fundraiser where cannabis gives back on July 18th. All right. Now that we've got all the scheduling out of the way, I can welcome our guests. So our guest today, uh, probably one of the most impressive resumes we've seen on this show. Uh, so our guest today is an executive in a software company focusing on the cannabis industry, but her legacy comes so much more than that. She's worked for uh, Fortune 50 companies, Fortune 500 companies. She's worked with Nike. She's worked with SAP and Oracle and so much more. We'll let her get into the story, but please welcome the Chief Revenue Officer of Akerna, Nina Samaska. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. No, no. Thank you for joining us. I mean, I, I look and I, I do my, my work to get you, you know, to, to get some information for this show. And I see pictures of you on stage in front of 500, 1,000 more people. So um, I, I'm honored that you would take the time to speak with us. You're not supposed to be looking at those pictures. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I appreciate the conversation and hopefully I can flex a little bit of my knowledge here because I do have a technology background. But I, your, your background is extremely impressive, but I think for our listeners at home, the one thing I want to get into is what exactly Akerna does, right? I think most of us know you from one of your flagship softwares, and I'm just going to assume it's flagship because people know it the most, MJ Freeway. But you guys have yes. more uh, <laughs> software in the portfolio, and I'm sure there's more innovation with, under the Akerna umbrella. Can you give yeah. us a, kind of a lay of the land? Sure, absolutely. So um, Akerna, as you described and as you know, um, publicly traded NASDAQ cannabis company. Um, underneath the Akerna umbrella and in the Akerna family, we have MJ Freeway, um, which is a software company. We have Leaf Data Systems, which is also a software company, but regulatory um, and compliance software that we sell to states and local governments as well as countries. Um, we have Solo Sciences, and we have Trellis Grows, which um, is a recent acquisition. And we have publicly announced, but is not yet final final, um, our acquisition of Ample Organics, who very much dominate uh, in Canada. That's it. A lot, of, lot going on at Akarna. So that, that was my biggest question was the difference between MJ freeway and leaf data systems. I yeah. realized it's who the audience is. Mm -hmm. Um, so let, let's kind of dig into that. Why, 
why two different softwares depending on who the audience is? Does it just work out that way that MJ Freeway has more, more, we'll call them terminals to run your business or more pieces to run your business, um, whereas Leaf Data Systems is really just more for regulators? Yeah, they're, they're, they are different products. Yeah, absolutely. So MJ Freeway, right? We do seed to sale, um, you know, point of sale systems, et cetera. Uh, Leaf is focused on the government regulatory and compliance. So that's the main difference. You nailed it. Got it. Very cool. Well, I know that MJ Freeway has been one of the most, you know, talked about most popular pieces of software in the industry. And I know that software is actually a big struggle for a lot of cannabis companies. So, you know, I love the fact that you guys are SaaS based and, and, and making it very easy on them. I, I want to ask a question, really, when it comes to your software like MJ Freeway, are you guys hindered by regulation and what you can and can't do? So, you know, obviously when you, when you're developing a piece of software, you're trying to make it as efficient as possible, right? To get from point A to point B, a lot of automation involved, but because the cannabis industry is so regulated, does it kind of handicap you when you guys are developing and, and how much do you need to keep that in mind? Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, it's very interesting being part of a software company when you are dealing with something and, and assisting the supply chain of something that is federally not legal um, in the United States. So that does very, very different um, SaaS software environment than most, you know, Silicon Valley or any other software kind of SaaS software startup is not hindered. Um, you know, each state is very different. So they grant a certain number of licenses for medical, a certain number of licenses for recreational. Um, and, you know, we're, we're limited to sell within those confines. Uh, so we don't actually touch the plant at all. Um, we are purely seed to sale tracking. And I know, Todd, you know, like I got into this industry. Yes, of course, I think cannabis should very much be legal. And I think um, it is uh, helpful to so many different ailments and it helps so many people around the world. Um, but more for just in general, if you think of agriculture, people really care these days what they put in their bodies. I know when I was growing up, and I don't know about you, but the, there was not this whole thing of a farm to table type of movement. There weren't so many people that you knew about when we were growing up that were vegan um, or paleo. And yeah. so what drew me right um, into chasing down our founder, uh, Jessica Billingsley, was all about, I think more and more people care what they put in and on their body. They want to know where it came from. They want to make sure it's legit and, and what you're reading and buying about where it came from is, is the truth. And for those factors, I just was drawn right into what this software does. You know, next time there is a E. coli or salmonella outbreak, right? Wouldn't it be awesome if in minutes you could tell, okay, it came from that farm, that field, that plant. Um, we're going there. Um, it will be that way. And uh, that just drew me right into this company. That, that's absolutely amazing. And, and I'm glad that you brought that up, right? That's a point that I try to hammer home a lot on this show is that as much as people wouldn't think cannabis users are mostly wellness users, right? That's right? They do fall, like you said, they fall into that category of people that are conscious of what they put into their body. A lot of them are a lot more mindful and spiritual than, than the average person. So what you guys are doing falls right into that category. And it's amazing to me because you would think that we have had E. coli outbreaks and we have had other outbreaks that come from the lettuce industry. I remember there was something with iceberg and spinach, right? Do you think that companies like MJ Freeway are really going to lead the way and not even just MJ Freeway across your portfolio because cultivation is important too, just lead the way from a general agricultural standpoint and help innovate other parts of agriculture that are not cannabis related? We absolutely will. I mean, my, my prediction would be we will be a significant player um, in that going forward. It absolutely makes sense. And if I, were a, if I were a farm and I was producing leafy greens, I would want to run our software um, for that specific reason. So uh, we are speaking to some farms. I think like before my time, you know, Jessica Billingsley started this uh, MJ Freeway 10 years ago. So we are by no means a new player. And I want to say very early days of her starting the company, um, they did sell 
their first version of the software to a tomato farm in New Zealand. I think it is. So um, Very cool. this is not something that's like been never heard of um, for us. We uh, definitely intend to get into the external to cannabis market, but you know, our heart and soul is, is with cannabis um, and that will remain our focus. Absolutely. I mean, if I can just want the only other place I would love to see you guys outside of cannabis is maybe the, uh, the San Marzano region of Italy, just to make sure when I get San Marzano tomatoes that they're real, but outside 100%. of that. But... Yes. Yes. That's so true. Well, when you think about people like are just crazy about like where the vines came from the for their wine mm -hmm. and where their fish came from. I think um, there's been some recent stories about people getting busted for like saying it's a certain kind of halibut and it's really not it's like you know some other white fish that isn't really you know pacific cotton halibut so this this whole thing runs deep <laughs> that that's funny it's, I, you're going so out of my my zone of expertise i'm lucky i can keep up with you with the tech <laughs> and the cannabis um you know you had mentioned jessica a few times and and i think it's incredible if you look at our industry right and i i want to thank jen perdomo for this shirt right here this is truly is are running these shirts for per pride month right and and I bring that up because I think our industry is more accepting than, than most others, right? At least I like to believe so. I could be 100% wrong, but we, we kind of are a place where, you know, as long as you're passionate about what we're doing, we all get along, right? We have people in, in the LBGTQ community. We have people of color. We have minorities and everything else. And we are in an industry where there are a lot of women leaders, right? that are powerful and recognized and really truly driving this industry you know going back to the the logo on my shirt is is truly run by kim rivers so what what's it like to work for an industry leader for a, a female entrepreneur and ceo that has been doing this for 10 years and is recognized as one of the top people in her industry and especially in her niche it, that's a great question and let me tell you i tracked her down um, so I had heard about her and I started researching and, um, the first time I spoke to her, she was like, well, Nina, you know, great to chat with you. You know, we don't really have a job for you. And so that's when the selling began. Um, so I was very, um, aggressive wanting to partner and team up, um, to join Jessica and the Akerna family. I sought it out. I chased her down. I just think what she has accomplished is amazing. Um, the path that I think that we're on is the path to be on. Um, and everything about it just resonated with me, as I was saying, you know, things people put in and on their body, right? The delivery mechanisms for cannabis are becoming so much more sophisticated. The salves, the edibles. Um, and people, like you said, in this industry, they're sensitive, they're into it. And they, they do care what, what, what they put in and on their body. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. And I think, you know, I think that the female-led executive teams are putting a new perspective into business that has a great eye on the consumer, right? Um, the, and, and look, you know, between you and, and Jessica, you guys are doing a great job with that. And well, she's inspiring, every, she's inspiring every day. Um, you know, she cares so much about what she's doing, right? She has a personal story. Um, that I think most of the company can really get behind of her reasons for why she started MJ Freeway 10 years ago. And, you know, people, when people are passionate, and it's not even a job anymore, right? It's, it's you're doing what um, your calling is. It's, it's not work per se. And yeah. I think many of us at MJ Freeway at Kerna feel that way. And so it's a, no, it's a I, great, great place to be. That, that's a great way to build culture. Um, and I, I kind of almost want to get back to, to you selling yourself to get this job, but we'll, we'll circle back there, you know, with you, with you talking about everybody getting behind Jessica and getting behind you and building a phenomenal culture. You know, one of those articles I, I read on your website, you wrote that the best company policy is trust, honesty, and people. And yeah. I thought that was absolutely amazing. Um, and you also talk about putting your mission before profit. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because when people look at your back, story, right? SAP, Oracle, Nike, um, you know, NTT, these are all significant profit generators, right? But, you know, I, I think people lose the fact that if they focus on the mission, 
the money will follow it. You just got to be passionate about the mission. Can you dig into that a little bit more? 100%. And I think Jessica's case in point for that, right? I mean, you know, she had a medical issue with her young daughter at the time um, that, was, that was solved and helped significantly by cannabis. And exactly what you said. I mean, I think, um, you know, it sounds so cliche, right? Do what you love and the money will follow. Um, but in this particular case, it's not about the money really for anyone on the executive team. We are all in this because we are passionate um, about cannabis and about the, its healing powers and about what it can do and um, helping people is, is what we're all about. So I know it sounds so cliche, but it, it is true. We, we love what we do. No, I, I, listen, I couldn't agree with you more. You're, you're sitting, you know, talking in a zoom call with, with somebody who's literally in his home office with, with a webcam and a computer and now has their own web TV show. Right. So, <laughs> you know, this, this is absolutely amazing. And I would almost argue that in our industry, folks, like, listen, I don't want to downgrow the cannabis industry, but there are so many rules and regulations and different taxes and everything else that we have to follow that most of us in the cannabis industry are doing it because we're passionate. And yes, there is a Hopefully long not for long. Hopefully not for long. Let's like, you know, I think legalization, <laughs> like we have to get there. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. So when you look at, you know, some of the losses um, from states tax revenues during this pandemic, um, I would hope that some of the legislators would, would turn to cannabis um, and, you know, consider legalizing it. It's the right thing to do. It's going to happen eventually. And it just, it just helps everyone. It helps the tax revenues for the states and municipalities, and it, it, it's helping people. I, you know, you're doing a very good job helping me with some of these transitions between topics here. Oh. But going back to how you just said that, you know, legislatures looking at the tax revenues or even, you know, for a state like Florida where it's fully medical potential tax revenues when they go adult use, I'm sure between all the companies that you guys have, the amount of access to real world data you guys have to make decisions has got to be absolutely incredible. Yes. So yes, we absolutely, I mean, I think um, for cannabis, we probably have the ro most robust um, uh, voluminous data set uh, in the industry purely because, uh, you know, Jessica started this thing 10 years ago, right? So there's no one who's been around longer. Um, she really started the whole seed to sale for cannabis movement. So yes, we have amazing data and we have been publishing um, these, these insights, um, these flash reports fairly regularly, which are amazing. And we've gotten a great response of people, you know, thinking, oh, like, you know, women are buying this and this is, you know, these, these are the adjacencies that are happening. So yeah, we definitely can glean a lot of industry insights um, from all of our work over the last 10 years, for sure. And, and, and going off those flash reports, I'm not sure if that's what I stumbled upon on the Akerna website, but I, you know, I we went did. under on the, in the news section, right? Completely expecting it to just be press releases. And, you know, some of the headlines that I saw were, were, listen, nothing against marijuana moment. It's my absolute favorite newsletter, but these are things that I just don't see in there, right? Um, boomers drive, drive the edible markets as they dip their toe in the water, right? Sales dip as states open back up. Uh, cannabis outpaces gin and tequila in sales, right? Those are just things that are, to me, are great pieces of information that you're not getting anywhere else. Um, do you guys do this as, as a newsletter form or do we have to go to your website to find all this? Uh, definitely go to our website. Um, sometimes we do, you know, we put that out on our social media channels for sure. Um, obviously for super deep insights, obviously, uh, you know, we have all different ways that customers can access their, their data um, and just see generally where they fit with the realm of people also in their state or in their region. Um, it's amazing. And so I'm glad you're enjoying those. And that tequila gin thing was a uh, eye opener for me as well. I'm like, wait, cannabis is outpacing the, some liquor. It's amazing. Well, you know, if we look at tequila ever since Clooney got into the game, it's been the, the new hot thing. You know, all my friends are drinking tequila now and it's not just Casamigos. They're exploring different ones and everything else, but to see cannabis, which is, you know, only legal in so many States outpacing it is, is absolutely incredible. Um, and, and I, you know, I wish I can say that I was enjoying these, these headlines. I just found them today, but I promise I'll be enjoying them going forward for sure. Reasons um, to come know, back to our website, Todd. Reasons to come back to the website. 
I would highly recommend that people go to your website and, and, and download some of this information because it's, it's not anything that I've seen anywhere else. Um, you know, listen, I think technology is, is the backbone of any organization and what you guys are doing is incredible. You know, so let's go back to you selling Jessica on coming to work for the company. You know, I can tell you if I was an entrepreneur and granted, she's, she was probably not probably, she was extremely successful by the time you guys crossed paths, but looking at your background, especially the, the you know, the time with, with SAP and Oracle, I, and I believe that you, you started all the way with Siebel originally that you were just a, a natural fit into the organization, just having that deep of an ERP background. And, um, for those of you who don't know what ERP is, I might get it wrong, but it's enter enterprise resource planning software. Well done. Perfect. Yes. Um, you know, I, I think the cannabis industry is changing and there are more and more people like myself who are getting into it. So there are some very senior CIOs that came from all kinds of different firms who are now showing up um, in the cannabis world not only CIOs, but CFOs and CEOs. So this is becoming a hot business to be in for technology executives. Um, you know, we're starting to run into some of my former employers in the field um, competing, um, which is actually excellent to see. Um, yeah, I, I, it was it was it was a hard sell with Jessica though. She's she wasn't uh, you know she wasn't easy. So um, I take my software experience and I just said, hey, this is going to be a booming business. It's not very often where people get an opportunity to come in at the birth of an industry, which is really what this is. Um, and I wanted to get in early. I wanted to get in at the beginning. I had another um, female colleague who was at another company who made the introduction and I was so grateful. Um, and I'm grateful to her today for the introduction and the fact that it worked out. I'm having so much fun and you just feel really good about what you do every day. You know you're helping people, you're helping dispensaries run their business, you're helping cultivators and you're helping the manufacturing process. It's just, um, you feel good about what you do every day. I, I can only imagine. I mean, when you when you go in the general IT landscape, right? Uh, SAP Oracle is like the gold standard when it comes to ERPs. Right now, a lot of people use Microsoft and things like that. But to be able to bring that background and to go to one of the staple ERPs of the cannabis industry, I can only see a, a ton of success coming from you guys. Um, so you have your awesome portfolio of companies. What are you guys looking, where, where is the innovation going next, right? So you have cultivation. Um, the one solo sciences, I believe that, that, was, that was the one that tracked where, where everything stemmed from. That's kind of the anti-counterfeit you know. one. Yeah, the anti-counterfeit yeah. one. Yep. You, hey, you, it, it, I would say innovation, you know, for sure we um, always uh, seem to have a very robust um, and lively uh, acquisition pipeline. Um, but also that look at the industry, right? Curbside pickup, uh, delivery, routing, right? There's all kinds of things that this industry is just accelerating. And the pandemic uh, changed some things that may be here to stay. Although it's funny, you know, I read an article today about, you know, that people really, really are preferring the in-person consults with butt tenders. Yeah. And so, I think now, you know, today I, the article was like, mm, maybe curbside pickup is, a, you know, not so hot anymore. I don't know. But uh, this industry is very flexible, adept, and fast moving. And so we innovate through our partnerships. We innovate through acquisitions, as you mentioned. And uh, we innovate internally just to make our software continuously better, more agile. And we want our customers to be self-sufficient. Um, and able to just, you know, make it as easy as possible. That's the key. Hmm. Well, uh, I'm going to contribute my two cents here. Based on what you just mentioned, you know, some people prefer the in-person consultation. Some people want to get it quickly with curbside and then other people who have a busy life are going to want to get it delivered. Yes. It'd be interesting to have whatever your client's preferred method of, of transaction is in their profile and then use that to market against them. 
just, you know, just throwing my two cents out there as a technologist, you know, if, if you guys I love put it. that in Careful, there. Careful, you'll, you'll find yourself credit. employed. <laughs> <I occur enough. laughs> hey, I, hey, I've got a show to do, okay? Um, <laughs> All right, no recruiting, no recruiting on, on your work time, okay. <laughs> Robert, dude, we're going to edit this part out so you don't see it, but um, I'm, I'm very happy being a podcast host for the immediate future, but it, it's... I, I think you guys are so needed for the industry because it is an industry that's been around for a very long time behind the scenes and seeing the innovation coming in is absolutely incredible and seeing that innovation leak into the rest of agriculture, I think is so important. Now, you know, going back into your background already, you know, you, you stated that this cannabis industry is a lot like the tech industry in Silicon Valley, as far as the startups go, as far as seeing people kind of come out of that, You know, do you see it? Do you still see now that you're a little bit more ingrained in the cannabis side, a lot of similarities between cannabis and tech, at least at the beginning? 100%. There is so many similarities. And, you know, even back to innovation, just like we do in Silicon Valley, big companies, smaller companies, um, you know, we work with customers. The, The customers really drive the majority of our innovation. That is exactly the same. Um, you know, we don't, there is no software release cycles anymore, right? We release multiple times a day. Um, so, you know, we are very, very much like a normal SaaS enterprise software company. Um, you know, it's unfortunate that we can only, we're only operating right now in 31 states, um, because of obviously the legality, 14 countries we're in today. Um, and growing. And so it's interesting. Some of the international markets and the clients there definitely push us uh, to innovate, which I, I appreciate. And it helps make better software when the customers are involved. Yeah. And so it, with your position there as, as chief revenue officer, obviously revenue is an important thing. When you guys are looking to grow and expand it to new markets, I imagine it's got to be completely different than, than what you've done in past lives that Um, You know, expanding almost starts with lobbying, kind of. It does. It it absolutely does. Right. I mean, it's, you know, there's certain things we're we're precluded, right? If it's not legal, we aren't going to do business there. And um, although I have to say um, our software does work for hemp um, and CBD, which is fully federally okay. And so we have clients, you know, who are in that realm as well. So that makes it nice and a little bit easier. But this cannabis thing, you know, we need to all lobby and all write in and uh, to our federal folks and get this legalized. It just doesn't make sense. 100% cannot agree with you more. I mean, even going back to what, you know, the temperature of what's going on in the world right now, a lot of people don't realize that the cannabis um, prohibition was actually used uh, to, to hurt minorities and, and to arrest minorities and things like that. So while we're working on these goals for, for equality, this is part of it, folks. You know, and, and, and I don't mean to keep bringing that up, but I don't want to sound tone deaf to what's going on across the world. Write in cannabis legalization. Make sure that it cannot be used against people in, in ways that it shouldn't be. This is a medicine. This is something that should be legal. It's something that our country has used for years and years and years. Um, but it, to transition off that that note, you know, it, it's incredible seeing how you guys have adapted as things come down. So I know you touched a little bit on the pandemic um, and how things have changed with curbside and delivery. And on that note, you know, you guys created some integrations with MJ Freeway. And I saw you did a little video of this on LinkedIn with iHeartJane for online delivery and with OnFleet, um, sorry, for online ordering and with OnFleet for delivery, you know, just seamless integration with, with other programs. Do you see a lot more of that API integration in, in your future? We, we do. So we, we are one of the few companies that we uh, fully expose our API. So partners can, can go to our partner portal and they can connect in. So we have 85, I think, and growing um, partnerships, which which also for our clients, it it makes it so much easier, right? When we're fully integrated to all of the, you know, partners that they want us to be integrated with. So yeah, we fully expose that API and and I do see the number of partner requests that we're getting every week is not slowing down. Um, If anything, it's increasing. So our partner ecosystem is really what makes us very strong as well. To have those friendly partners integrated, it just makes things better for everyone. So, so I'm very familiar with partner ecosystems coming from the IT world. Exactly. You, know, you guys sit, you guys sit in a very 
interesting position, right? Because there aren't a ton of where I come from resellers targeting the cannabis industry. My, my company, Wheelhouse IT, Wheelhouse IT is one of them. I'm just going to give a shameless plug. But, you know, there aren't a ton of, of resellers. You know, who, who are you guys partnering with more? Is it more so the, the cannabis consulting groups or is it the traditional IT resellers? Um, well, it, it's, it's partners who actually have uh, ancillary solutions to ours, right? Um, so okay. for example, you know, on the financials, we don't ever want to get into that game. So we have partnered with NetSuite, we partner with Sage and we partnered with SAP. So if Very you cool. are running our software and obviously you need the financial system, um, you know, we have a QuickBooks integration. Um, and then of course, Sage, NetSuite or SAP, um, if you want something, you know, deeper, more robust. So, you know, we partner in, in areas where we, it's not our core competency, right? Our core competency will never be delivery, um, right? We're not going to um, have those yeah. fleet of vans and the routing, right? And so that's where most of our partnerships come with us, you know, who rounds us out and can make us stronger. So as a holistic solution, um, there's nobody better. Very cool. I think I know who was responsible for the SAP relationship, um, <laughs> at least making a guess there. I worked at Oracle as well, Todd. Don't forget. <laughs> um, I, actually, funny enough, when I, when I first started in sales, because that's what I do for a day job, um, Siebel was the very first uh, CRM system I ever used. I'm very familiar with it. So seeing your background with Siebel, I'm like, oh, I remember that. Um, it's amazing how far things have come from those days. Um, <laughs> yeah, that feels like ask, a million years ago. Yeah, that was, I think 2008 was the last year I used it too. 2009, maybe. Yeah. Great um, company. So fast growing and it's just so interesting, right? An Oracle spin out that ended up spinning right back in. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love seeing that in the tech industry. And that's actually a question that I would I'd be interested about, about a Kerna in general, right? is as things start heading towards federal legalization, and I'm pretty confident you can't answer this question because you guys are publicly traded, but do you see a Kerna being acquired by an Oracle or by a Microsoft or by a Google even? Of course I now, can't answer that question. Now? I have, I mean, who knows, right? We have our mission. We are driving every day to help our clients and really their clients at the end of the day. And we're just staying focused. We're not thinking about any of that. Sounds good. Typical public company response. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um. <laughs> hey, I don't, I don't blame you for asking. Go ahead. You can ask away. Well, I mean, you know, it's, if we can drive the stock price up and after hours trading, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, um, let's do know, that. Joe Rogan was able to affect Tesla stock. Maybe elevate your grind can affect the Kerna stock um, <laughs> in a positive way though. <laughs> yes. How, um, you know, so where I come from in IT is, is really the boring side of things, right? It's, it's not even line of business applications. It's backend collaboration software, email, SharePoint, you know, things like Microsoft Teams. We were talking about different virtual conferencing software before we came well, that's on That's critical here. though. It's critical, critical that you have well, that. That's why I wanted to ask you is how important is it for you guys to look at integrations with traditional business software, like stupid things like Microsoft Office or, or Outlook or, or any of that stuff, you know, because I don't see a ton of, you know, I see cannabis companies starting to move to Office 365, but a lot of them are still on Google platforms. Are those integrations as important as the Sage and Oracle integrations? I, I think they will be. Yeah, I mean, I think they will be. I mean, it's unbelievable the speed of consolidation. Um, within the cannabis industry. And, you know, of course, things are always going to expand and contract. But yeah, I mean, as this becomes more and more mainstream, um, you know, MJ platform will be at the center of all of it. So yes, I think those will become uh, increasingly important, of course. Very cool. So you mentioned MJ platform. Is that is that where you guys are going with MJ Freeway or is that well, the that entire Well, that is the second generation. Portfolio? So that is the product name. So that is the, our second generation software of MJ Freeway. Yes. Okay. See, I'm still educating myself on the software side of things. So just trying to learn as we well, go Well, and here. it's hard too when you have a Kerna, you know, as the parent and then all of these entities underneath, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not easy. So you're doing a great job. Well, thank you. Um, I think that's the unfortunate part of, um, you know, the unfortunate part of our industry is having to do weird corporate structures and things like that just to stay in compliance. Um, 
I kind of want to, you know, we had mentioned that you guys were publicly traded and, and earlier in the call, you had also mentioned that you were non-plant touching, right? And I think that's important because people need to understand you guys are actually trading in the U.S., right? You're not on we the are, Canadian We are, we are, yes, we are publicly traded on the NASDAQ. And it's funny, some of my, you know, especially when I first started, they would call me up and say, you know, how's the pot business? And it's like, mm, yeah, I don't know. Like we, we are software, we don't touch the plants. And so we're a software company um, yeah. and it works again for hemp, for CBD, domin dominating, you know, in, in, from our perspective, right. Our core competency and what we're focused on is cannabis first. Um, but you know, it's, it, as it's, it's not beyond the side of reason that we will be expanding to agriculture, leafy greens, those type of things. It just, it just makes sense, but we're software. And so focus on cannabis for sure. But when people ask me how the pot business is, I can, uh, you know, I can comment on how much volume our, our, our customers are, are seeing um, and how smoothly things are going. Um, but it, it's, it is funny, like cannabis, yes, but really we're a software company. Do you, do you find it hilarious when, when you talk to people outside of the industry that they just love making cannabis puns? Like we haven't heard all of them. Well, I think they think that we like sit around and smoke pot, like, and have, you know, meetings and we're like, you know, doing bong hits. So it's like, no, this, it's a very professional, normal business. Um, it's just, yeah, it is very funny. People yeah, when, when crack we, me up. When Wheelhouse first started focusing on the cannabis industry, a few of the people started making the puns and I'm just like, we've heard them all guys. Like <laughs> you've been in this industry for a year. You, you've heard the cannabis puns. We're kind of sick of them. Um, let's, let's focus here. Um, you know, so true. I, on that note too, just looking at people outside of our industry, you know, one of the reasons that we do this show is to help break the stigma, having folks on like yourself with such a, a great, incredible corporate background showing, like you just said, we're not sitting in conference rooms, hitting bongs and cargo shorts mm -hmm. and just kind of coming up with ideas and not executing on them. You have to execute harder and faster than most people do because our industry is constantly changing. It's constantly being updated to what was legal before isn't legal now and vice versa. And then all of a sudden a pandemic kits and we got to change the way we operate what blows my mind still to this day that there are organizations that refuse to work with the cannabis companies and when i say organizations i mean technology companies and we don't have to call anybody out by name because i don't want to get anybody in trouble here but do you find it crazy that there are major companies that just don't want a piece of this industry i find it mind-blowing and i mean i do think the stigma sadly still is out there um, you know, again, I had people be like, oh, Nina, like, are you sure you want to, you know, join a cannabis software company? And, you know, yes, all pharmaceuticals originated first with plants and herbs. Um, I think yeah. it's ridiculous. And sure, I mean, let's talk about the whole Safe Banking Act that, you know, needs to pass. It is insane that these holistic uh, clients that are trying to, you know, provide a cannabis solution to their clients can't get banking, right? Yeah. So I, I'm with you 100%. It, is, it blows my mind. And I think like once you're in it and it's just so normal, it's professional, our, our environment is actually very much like it was at SAP, very much like it was at Oracle. Um, our offices aren't different. We're, we're, there's not like plants growing and people doing bong hits in the office. It's very professional, normal like you'd expect uh, in an IBM or Accenture office. Um, and so the stigma does blow my mind because I think when you're in it, then you realize how technical it is, you know, how I'm, I'm learning so much about cannabinoids and like it, the whole process um, is far more technical than I think I realized when I jumped in. No, and, and I agree with you 100%. I think, you know, if you go to a cannabis industry conference, it's not that all that different than a tech conference. We've just got better swag, right? I haven't paid for a Bic lighter since I've joined the industry. Um, but it, it, it is all the same. You've got people in suits and ties. You've got people that are dressed business casual. And, and, and on your note, like you said, if we are truly becoming a wellness industry, it blows my mind that we have to try so hard to get some of these publicly traded corporations to just take a look at us. But on the other hand, 
if they if we had the Microsofts and the Oracles and the Googles and everybody else focusing 100% on this industry, you and I wouldn't be sitting here because we wouldn't have an Akerna, right? So it gives folks like you that truly have a passion for this industry and, and Jessica specifically a chance to create something from nothing and become an industry leader. And what you guys have done has been incredible, I think. And, and I hope, I know you're more recent to the company, but I hope, you know, your addition is just pure gasoline on the fire. And, and I'm really excited to watch you guys grow for the rest of the year. Um, you know, with, with that being said, what do we have to look forward to from Akerna this year? Oh my Besides the one, the one acquisition you guys talked about. <laughs> well, you know, you never know. There, there could be more acquisitions out there. Um, we keep our options open. I think you'll see more robust partnerships um, for sure. Um, hopefully some amazing um, press and things with some of our customers um, who are really, again, pushing our innovation, which is so important. So, hey, we just love doing what we do and getting up every day and helping out our customers and ensuring our software is easy to use uh and does the job really right so i'm excited as we go into this year and uh i thank you for your growth wishes we hope the same thing and i hope that the industry and people outside the industry really take another look i feel like we really know what it was like to be back in the days of prohibition right yeah it it feels the same and it's like one of these days and it will be in our lifetime where people just to be like, okay, it'll be federally legal and just like alcohol. Yeah. It, and if we learned anything from the prohibition of alcohol, the only thing that prohibition ever does is create organized crime. Um, you know, prohibition of alcohol created the mafia. Um, the only thing we got good out of that was a bunch of great movies. But other than that, there was nothing positive about it. Uh, the prohibition of cannabis created opportunities for the cartels, right? And the reason that we have to that, that, that companies like Solo Sciences exist is because of the garbage that the cartels were putting into cannabis and into the things that were on the street, right? We had the vape crisis. We had all of that. And companies like yours are, are the answer to it, right? And when, yes, I, when I talk about yes. growth, yeah. yeah I was going to say, Jessica, Jessica, had, Jessica had a very strong opinion and voice um, around the vape crisis, uh, which, yeah, of course, we, we can solve that. So. Yeah. And, and and as she should, right? You know, when, when the general public tries to take something that's untrue and use it against us, I'm glad to see the, the, the leaders of our industry stepping up. But I go back to, to when I said, I'm excited to watch you grow. I'm very confident in that statement because you guys are innovating in two industries. When you, when you don't look at cannabis as just the cannabis industry, you guys are innovating in agriculture and you're innovating in retail. Now, the general public looks at those two industries as completely dying industries, right? But the cannabis industry is bringing both of those back. It's bringing agriculture back in full force and it's bringing retail back in full force because we can't sell online and delivery is limited, right? So I, I'm very excited to see how the innovations that you guys come up with in those two verticals is going to affect retail as a whole and how it's going to affect agriculture as a whole. Because I love the fact that America is becoming a farming community again, except for the so. fact that I, I don't want to see every farmer in America growing cannabis and hemp. I'd love to make sure that we still have good tomatoes and veggies and fruits and everything else. But I think I'm very excited to see you guys expand outside of cannabis. Keep doing what you're doing, but I'm excited to see the innovation that you guys that leaks into other industries. Yeah, I, I absolutely. Absolutely agree. I, I'm looking forward to it. I think we have amazing things to come over the next couple of years and I'm just you know fortunate to be a part of it. Very cool. No, I, I'm fortunate that you were willing to do the show and I hope, you know, as, as you guys grow and you and Jessica come on the show and continue to help make announcements and everything else, you have a friend in us and, you know, please feel free to leverage this as a platform to announce that, you know, all, all seven of our viewers in the state of Florida, I'm kidding. We'll have more than that. With the <laughs> we will definitely but. try to bring Jessica next time. She and Absolutely. I can tag team it two against one. Well, Be careful, Todd. <laughs> Hopefully I'm prepared for that. I'm, I'm hard, like I said, I have a hard time keeping up with your knowledge. So um, <laughs> thank you so much for doing the show. Uh, let's let you promote yourself, you know, websites, social media. If you have, you know, I know you're in demand probably for conferences. If there's any virtual conferences you're speaking up, please feel free to promote them. Hey, I mean, a, a Kerna, MJ Freeway, Ample Organics, Trellis Grows, Solo Sciences, uh, we love our family of companies and look forward to the growth this coming year. 
Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining. We really appreciate you being there or being here. Uh, we're going to sit back and watch you grow. Hopefully you'll join us in February at our, um, at, at our conference when we have it. And oh, completely forgot. I forgot. I told Raphael I was going to shout him out on the show and I didn't Yay, do that. Raph. So, right. So Raph, Thank you. You've been a very big help for me. Uh, you were on my IT panel. You crushed it. it. It was actually, Raph, you were one of the last people I saw before the pandemic hit. So you are, are fresh in my mind. And I am very sorry that I took till the end of the show to shout you out. But you know what? Now you have to watch the entire show to hear your name. So Exactly. You know. This is good. He has to watch it till the end. Raph's amazing. <laughs> we were so happy. We were so happy that he decided to come join us. So thanks for the very shout cool. out. Well, you're known by the, the company that you keep, and, and Raph is a great guy. So thank you very much for joining us, and thank you, thank you everybody at home, for watching another episode of Elevate Your Grind. Um, these are extremely fun. I hope you enjoy them because we're going to continue to do them, and we're out.